Uh, this is the session on uh, enabling application performance and monitoring within .NET applications. Uh, my name is Dave Tillman. I'm with Pivotal. Um, I've been working on the Steel Toe project for, well, since its inception from, from, from day one. Uh, in fact, uh, my uh, favorite colleague last night, Tim here, who also works on the Steel Toe project, uh, decided to give me a nickname, which was called Papa Steel Toe. <laughs> Don't know why. Um, but anyway, um, I prefer uh, Papa Toe, so we'll take the short version of that from now on. Um, but anyway, I've been working on Steel Toe for quite a while, and uh, uh, so I've got some good things to talk about today. Before I get there, let's uh, do this slide. You've all seen this at least a dozen times today, so I'm not going to read it to you. I think you already know what it says. And so I'll move right on to, uh, to the session itself. So here's the outline today. Um, we're going to start out and talk about some cloud native frameworks that you probably already are aware of today, uh, at least uh, in the Java and .NET space. Um, we're going to talk about Spring Cloud and, and uh, Steel Toe, two frameworks that uh, we'll uh, go into a little bit of depth on. But what we're really going to focus on in this session is, of those frameworks, uh, monitoring and management. The, tools, the technology that you can, employ, you can include in your Java apps or in your .NET apps, of course I'm going to focus primarily on .NET in this session, uh, to enable monitoring and management of your app in a production environment, runtime type environment. And then throughout the session, I'll be using a demo app to try to go illustrate uh, all those features that, uh, that you can make use of. I'll also bring up some code, show you how within .NET and SteelToe, using the SteelToe frameworks, you enable this this stuff within your app. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, in the Java world, um, we've all probably heard of Spring. We've all heard of Spring Boot these days, or at least many of you probably have. Um, and then, of course, Spring Cloud, which is uh, built on top of those things. So you got Spring Cloud, which is a cloud, basically a, a Java framework that you, you, you can use to uh, basically cloud enable or make your applications cloud native in, in, uh, in uh, your environment. Uh, Spring Cloud is based off of or built on Spring Boot, which has been, become very, very popular, which in turn is built on the Spring framework itself that's been around for many, many years for building uh, web apps and uh, other apps within uh, the Java ecosystem. Uh, then layered on top of that, Pivotal has taken Spring Cloud, packaged up components of it, and offered up something called Sp Spring Cloud Services, which is an offering that will run on uh, Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Uh, it's packaged up as a tile, as a Bosch deployable unit. As part of that, you get um, several pieces of, t of uh, uh, technology, things like a service registry, uh, centralized configuration. You get Hystrix, uh, which is uh, uh, something created by uh, Netflix. You get a bunch of components that are quite useful in building uh, microservices uh, in, in the Java, Java language. Uh, and this has been around for uh, actually for quite some time, uh, several, actually several years. Um, then on the uh, .NET side, what we did is we started a project, Pivotal sponsored a project, uh, I think it's been about two years now, I think, uh, probably right, Jason, when you say we've been doing this for about two years. So the Steel Toe project started about roughly two years ago, um, and the idea was is, uh, to enable .NET applications to be able to use those services that I just described uh, running on Cloud Foundry and, and making basically .NET a first-class citizen for app and microservices development on, on, on Cloud Foundry. This is a project, if you've not heard of it, it's, a, it's an open source project. Like I said, it's about two years old. Uh, there's the link to uh, the code up on, uh, in GitHub. Uh, there's some documentation that goes along with it there that uh, if you're interested in digging in, in more depth on it. And uh, there's a Slack channel where you can find uh, myself, Tim, and others that work on the project. Uh, so if you need help, you just come to that Slack channel. We're always there ready, ready to help. Uh, the Steel Toe framework works both on .NET Core, uh, in other words, the core CLR, uh, .NET Core framework um, on across platform, across uh, operating systems. It also supports the full framework, uh, the .NET uh, uh, full framework that you, you've been using for probably many, many years, okay? Uh, it also works with ASP.NET Core and ASP.NET 4X. 
So if you've got, uh, uh, you're moving on to ASP.NET Core, Steel Toe will work seamlessly in there. And we've also done some work here in the 2.0 release to try to make better uh, support of ASP.NET 4X, the, what I like, like to refer to as the legacy uh, web app technology. On the right side of the screen, or I guess, uh, yeah, on the right side of the screen, you'll see um, the, the areas that Steel Toe covers. Uh, there's really kind of two areas that it, that it focuses on. Uh, one is simplifying building apps and running them and deploying them and managing them on Cloud Foundry. And then the other is uh, tying into those Spring Cloud services that operate on, on Cloud Foundry. Those are actually Java-based, uh, you know, they're built in Java uh, technology, but they all offer up REST services, so it's, uh, Netflix service discovery, Hysteric, and all of that are easily accessible from a .NET application using uh, Steel Toe. So what I want to do is I want to, we, we, we literally could spend hours and hours and hours on all of the components that make up Steel Toe. So what I want to do in this session is I want to focus on the management and monitoring, what I refer to as the M&Ms, of, uh, of Steel Toe. And so if you leave today with nothing else, remember this to be the M&M presentation given by the Steel Toe team, and uh, uh, you, you're going to learn about monitoring and management uh, as it relates to uh, .NET applications. And I'm actually going to cover both areas, both Java and .NET, so that you can relate. If, you, if you're a mixed shop and you've got dot, both Java and .NET, here are some of the spring, spring components that uh, make up uh, I'm sorry, the Java components that make up the, same, the equivalent functionality in Java, and then I've also listed the steel toe components. And you can break up monitoring and management into four major areas, okay? We've got, at the very top, we've got what we refer to as the management endpoints. These are um, endpoints that I'll go into here in a minute that, that allow you to uh, gather or collect information out of your app at runtime, and uh, they basically are REST endpoints that you can hit, and I'll describe them here in a second. Then, in addition, uh, if you are interested in using Hystrix as a fault management, a fault tolerant uh, latency kind of framework for building uh, your dependencies on remote, uh, remote instances, um, you can use Hystrix. And within the Hystrix framework, there's a lot of uh, status and monitoring and statistics that flow out of that Hystrix uh, environment that you can make use of. And we've got an implementation in .NET now uh, for, that we did as part of Steel Toe that's completely compatible with the Java version. So you can gather hit, uh, metrics and, and performance data out of both your Java app and your Hystrix, have them flow into one common dashboard and see the status of, of your circuits that you've got going. And then two new things that we're kind of announcing, I guess, at this show that we've just recently added is we're adding distributed tracing functionality and we're adding metrics uh, into, into uh, the .NET world. Those things already existed in the Java world. Uh, you had something called Spring Sleuth, Sleuth that was used uh, for doing uh, distributed tracing. What we're announcing here is, is that we've done a Steel Toe Open Census implementation. Open Census is a project that has been championed by Google and uh, uh, is basically uh, centers around uh, implementing distributed tracing. And we've done a .NET implementation of that, basically a port of the Java uh, uh, open census code over into .NET, along, obviously with some, some changes that made more sense for .NET. And then on top of that, we ported, of course, all of the uh, unit tests. So there's some 450 unit tests that we had to port over as well to make all that work. In addition, then, we've also added uh, uh, support for open census and steel toe for metrics gathering. So what, that's one of the really beautiful things about open census is it's not only all about distributed tracing, but it also has uh, stats gathering or metrics gathering. And so we've gone ahead and, and uh, ported that code over as well. And then we're building on top of that, as I'll, I'll show you here in, in a little bit. All right, so let's focus first on the management endpoints. These are uh, essentially uh, endpoints that give you access to information that uh, just by incorporating the Steel Toe framework into your application, you're able to provide these types of things uh, uh, in, inside of your application. The endpoints themselves are not really tied to HTTP REST calls, but if you want to, but out of the box, if you just drop it in the way you typically would, it'll expose these endpoints, this functionality, as REST endpoints that can be called by any application. Today, I'm going to show you the Pivotal Apps Manager, which will actually 
call those REST endpoints and surface the information within, within a nice UI within Pivotal Apps Manager. And there's the list of the endpoints that you can, you can uh, make use of. We just recently added to, uh, to the list uh, for .NET applications, dump and heap dump. Uh, dump allows you to capture a thread dump of the application at runtime. And the heap dump actually allows you to capture a mini dump. So if you're diagnosing a problem, let's say you've got a, maybe you have a memory leak or something in one of the instances, you'd like to grab a memory dump or a heap dump so that you could do some off, 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 uh, off analysis of it. Um, you're able to do that now online, you know, right, right, within, uh, right within the tool. And all of these endpoints, like I said, they're offered up by both Java and they're offered up by both .NET. So anything that is able to call those REST endpoints and display the information coming out of it can be used to, to access uh, the, uh, the information out of it. So I'm going to show how you can do this with the Pivotal Apps Manager here in a minute. But of course, like I said, it's just REST endpoints. So here's the demo app that I'm going to use. It's a real simple app. Uh, we've got a shopping cart uh, microservice on the front end. You hit it with the check at the checkout endpoint. It calls the process order. Uh, microservice, which in turn calls the pay process, and then the results all flow back, back through. V very, very simple. And I've enabled it with both the Java and the Steel Toe components to uh, uh, provide these uh, REST endpoints within, within the application. And I'm going to use the Apps Manager down there at the bottom to actually surface the information that comes out of, out of, uh, out of those apps. So, if the Demo gods are good to us today. We will have, uh, so here's the, here's the sample. Uh, very simple, I'm just gonna hit the shopping cart uh, process, hit the checkout, hit that a few times, and basically just returns some JSON that says uh, the order's been processed and the cart's successfully been charged. So, so we'll get a, get a couple things going there. Now if we go back to the apps manager, we see, we see the three, uh, microservices that I talked about. The um, payments and shopping cart are Java applications. The order processor is um, the .NET application. Ignore the Zipkin server. I'll get to that in a, in, a, in a bit here in a second when I start talking about distributed tracing. So if we bring up, for example, the shopping cart service, the first thing that happens is within, within this particular product, the Pivotal uh, Apps Manager, is you see a logo up here in the, in the top left corner, which is the Spring Boot logo, for those of you who know a little bit about Java. And that signifies that this app has been, been um, uh, augmented with the actuator management endpoints, right? The, the REST endpoints are, have been enabled. And what happens is there's some, there are some uh, additional menu items that are added to the application. So for example, we see this trace, we see threads, which, is, which we can use to do thread dumps. If we go down here and look at one of the instances uh, that's running, uh, we'll see that we can take a heap dump uh, of this particular Java app, et cetera, et cetera. So these are, these are things that the apps manager has queried the application, hit the endpoints, determined what's actually implemented and available, and now surfaces that within, within this. So for example, we could take a look at threads in this particular Java application. If I, uh, here's a list of all the threads, and you get a, you get a stack trace uh, for each one of those. So if you're trying to diagnose a problem where you're, you're beginning to see an instance slowing down and you're trying to figure out what are all the threads doing, why isn't it, why isn't it responding to requests or why are they taking so long, you could do a thread dump, look at the threads, see what they're all busy doing, and maybe begin to get an idea of what's going on inside of that, in, that side of that app. If we switch over to the .NET application, Similar thing start, happens now because we've, we've enabled these applic this uh, application with the actuator endpoints. In this case, we get the steel toe symbol up at the top. That signifies that the actuator endpoints are now in the application itself. We get a trace. We get some things. We get, a, we, we get uh, able to view traces. Uh, this particular app that I've got is an ASP.NET Core app that's running on Linux. And so since it's not running on Windows, I don't have the thread dump and I don't have the heap dump available to me right now. That's something we're going to add in the future. Um, but it's not there yet. But one of the things, for example, that you get is um, 
notice the steel toe symbol down here, is you get some Git information. So one of the things that the endpoints provide is the info endpoint that allows you to uh, capture some, basically some configuration information about the application. In this case, it's Git information. It tells you what commit this, was, this app is, was built from. It gives you when it was built, some things that, you know, typically when you're starting to diagnose a problem, you kind of want to know what instance and what bit of code am I actually looking at so that you can begin to, to, uh, to look at it. So let me switch over to let me switch over to some, some looking at this, uh, this app itself, the order, the .NET app. So um, in order to get those things to, those endpoints to become available, those REST endpoints to become available, it's pretty straightforward within your application to add that functionality. So if I go to uh, program main and take a look at the application, can everybody see that? A little bit bigger? Uh, let's see, control. How's that? Good enough? So there's a couple things, couple things that were added in here for, for making this, uh, uh, enabling this application with SteelToe and, and uh, those endpoints. The first thing is we do is we add this uh, Cloud Foundry configuration provider. This basically parses VCAP services, VCAP application, and pulls that information into your application and makes it part of your application's configuration data. It also makes it available for all the other steel toe components for, uh, for operation. Then, as you're going to see in a minute, we're going to talk about logging. One of the features that, uh, that's in the actuator endpoints is the ability to monitor and change the logging of your application on the fly. To do that, you have to add, use something called the dynamic console logger. It's basically a wrapper around the uh, standard logging provider that uh, uh, Microsoft provides for console. But it also then allows us to do this uh, querying and, and uh, changing of the, console, of the log levels. So those two things are needed in program main. And then over in your startup class, you need to add the Cloud Foundry actuators. This will add all of those, all of those endpoints, info, logging, heap dump if it's, per, if it's relevant. All those things that I said, just with this one single command, will add those endpoints as services within the container. <clears throat> then, if you go down here, you then have to add those REST endpoints as, uh, into, the, into the pipeline, into the, as, as part of middleware. So then you just do this. And now all of those REST endpoints have been actually enabled and made available now within your application. That's all you need to do. There is one small thing I forgot, I just thought of. You do have to add some, a little bit of configuration. So in appsettings.json, you have to enable this endpoint or this path uh, for the management endpoints. This is the, this is the endpoint that the uh, apps manager calls in order to access those uh, REST endpoints. This is the uh, context. Okay, that's pretty much it. So just uh, quickly, uh, Trace, what Trace does is when you enable, tr when you have the Trace actuator endpoint within Within your app enabled, you actually are able, it keeps a circular buffer of the last 100 requests that came into that application. It captures uh, request headers and the response data. It also um, captures response time. This particular request took 37 milliseconds. And, and basically, it's, it's actually configurable as to what information you collect as part of that trace. Uh, as I said, it's a circular buffer that runs a, 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 a uh, by default, 100, 100 uh, requests. Then when we look at logging, one of the things that I mentioned is that, that's enabled is you are able to configure logging levels. So if I click on this logging level thing, I'll notice, first of all, that I'm able to see now I've got, I'm, I've got 109 loggers that have been created within this application since it's been running. And I can go in here and say, web application two, and I see all of the categories underneath that, and I can just go over here and switch this to debug. And now all of those loggers have been changed from uh, whatever it was, info or nothing, to debug level logging. Now you can capture logs, for example, if you're trying to diagnose a problem, you can capture some logs. This has been changed on all instances of, the, of this particular application, whatever it may be. Uh, so you can capture the logs and do some offline analysis if you're trying to diagnose a problem. Then when you're all done, you can go back and uh, you know, set, it to, set it to info 
and uh, you're ready to go. So this is a nice little feature that we've, uh, that's enabled by the uh, uh, actuator endpoints. Also, if I go in here, there's a, what's called a health endpoint. The health endpoint uh, is essentially captured, in this particular case, what it's capturing is it's, it's looking at the disk uh, space that you have available for this particular instance of the app and making sure that the, you're not eating up all the disk space. If you, you can set thresholds such that if that app begins to write too much data to its local disk and, be, and begins to overflow, it'll, it'll uh, flag this as being an application that is in, a, in bad health. You can also add other health indicators into here. Like, for example, we have a MySQL health indicator, which will actually test the MySQL connection if you actually have a MySQL uh, uh, database uh, tied to your application on the back end. There could be RabbitMQ, and in fact, you can write your own health indicators and plug it into this, this infrastructure without too much trouble, and you'll just see this information pop up within, at least, you know, as REST uh, JSON data that comes back in REST calls. Okay? So those are the management endpoints. I pretty much focused on the .NET ones, but all that same stuff is there for Java as well. So it's nice. You have one common set of endpoints that you can use to look into and peer into uh, both run, running Java applications and .NET apps. This has been part of what, what I just described has been part of SteelToe uh, up through uh, 2.0. We're currently working on 2.1 of SteelToe right now. Okay, so let me move on to another area distributed tracing. This is a new area for 2.1 uh, for .NET, for SteelToe. Um, it's been around, obviously, in the Java world for quite some time. Uh, it's part of, uh, in the Java world, it's called Spring Cloud Sleuth. Um, and it's pretty much tied to Zipkin, although I think in the 2.0 release, they're doing some things to add open tracing uh, support as well. Um, and then, if you want to add, you know, basically use uh, distributed tracing within your app, uh, in the Java world, you add a dependency on, Spring, on uh, Sleuth, and uh, in the SteelToe world, you'll be adding a dependency. This is not currently out there today. It's, it's uh, still in, in process. Uh, you'll add something called Tracing Core as a, as a nugget dependency, okay? When you do that, out of the box, the first, the, one of the things that you get uh, right away is all uh, Trace IDs and span, what are called span IDs. You think of a trace as, as a distributed request that's going through many, multi, uh, many microservices. Within each one of the microservices, there is a sp typically at least one or more spans created which are capturing uh, trace information about that particular request. And you can add or annotate uh, whatever you want to that span. That's all collected together as part of a trace. And then optionally, as you'll see, you're able to actually send, each one of those microservices can send their uh, spans up to a central server for uh, analysis and logging. Out of the box, what you get with uh, the SteelToe uh, distributed trace is we enable um, adding uh, span IDs and trace IDs to all log outputs that come out of the application. And what that allows you to do is do something called log correlation. This is also done in the Java application. So uh, what's, what's added is, is essentially this capability right here, or that, I'm going too fast, that little uh, bit of uh, service ID, service name, trace ID, span ID, and exported uh, is all added to every one of the log, uh, log entries. And then what we've also done as part of SteelToe is we've then gone ahead and instrumented all the ingress and egress places within your application. So when a request comes in to say an ASP.NET Core application, we'll automatically start a span, a, 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 a piece of the trace. And then if you initiate a HTTP request call to another uh, outside process, we'll actually forward the context, the trace context, automatically for you at that egress point, okay? So that that trace will continue to flow throughout the uh, microservices application. And like I said, this works for both Java and .NET. It's all interoperability, all interoperable, and uh, I'll show you here an, ex an example. That's what you get automatically out of the box. Then you can optionally, if you'd like to, instrument your app yourself. So uh, you can start your own spans, or you can add context or more information to the spans, uh, like, for example, customer IDs or 
uh, order IDs, or whatever, any information you'd like to add to your application or add to your trace can be done. And you do that in, in the Java world using the Brave APIs, the Zipkin Brave APIs. They're part of the Sp uh, Spring Cloud Sleuth. In the Steel Toe world, you'll be using the Open Census API APIs, the ones that I talked about that we've implemented uh, as part of the Google activity that we've done. And then optionally, you can enable your application to send those spans and traces to the backend server, and you can export them to different backends. Zipkin is one of the more popular ones that we uh, uh, have used uh, in, uh, within Pivotal quite a bit, but there are others, Jaeger, uh, uh, Stack, uh, whatever it's called, Stackdriver from uh, uh, Google, and others. There's, there's quite a few. We've already done one exporter for Zipkin as part of the Steel Toe uh, project. Okay, so let me, uh, let me go into, again, the demo that illustrates this, that, that will drive this home. So I'm gonna use something from Pivotal called PCF Metrics to show log correlation. That's down there in the bottom, bottom left. And uh, it's important to realize that the log messages are just getting annotated with that, that information. If you're using some other log analysis tool instead of PCF metrics, the same demo that I'm about to show you would, would work as well because it's all just basically flowing in through the logger gator and out the fire hose into whatever, uh, whatever wants to collect it. And then I'll also show you the Zipkin server so the traces will actually get sent back into a Zipkin server and we'll take a look at that as well. Okay. So I'm gonna start a a uh, console app that will start hopefully hitting the endpoint and start generating some traces and so forth, some, some data uh, on the app. And then I'm gonna go to PCF metrics here. And um, so this is PCF metrics, if you've never seen it. There are actually two parts to PCF metrics. There's a log analysis part of it, and then there's a metrics uh, uh, analysis. Uh, component. We're going to first focus on the log analysis part right, right here. So this is a, essentially a raw log uh, dump of, of this, this uh, set of applications. And I'm going to pick one of the, I'm going to pick this uh, log message from checkout. First of all, the thing that you want to want to take a look at is notice this here. This is what I was talking about. Every one of the log messages coming out of these applications now contain the name of the component the uh, trace ID and the span ID, and that's what's used to do log correlation, and that's what, uh, in this case, PCF metrics or any other uh, application could, could use. The way, you, the way you make use of that within PCF metrics is you find, uh, like, the get checkout request, and you click on this button to view the trace, uh, to view the trace in the Trace Explorer. So I'm gonna go ahead and click, click that, and what I get here is now I get all of the log messages that are specific to this particular trace, this particular trace ID, okay? So every one of the log messages from the payments processor, the orders processor, and the shopping cart are all shown here. And they're all actually shown, uh, I think it's in uh, ascending, or uh, old, newest to oldest uh, is the way it's sorted right now. And then up at the very top, it actually shows you the timings for each one of those requests. So you see the time that it took for the checkout uh, <clears throat> endpoint to finish was 58 milliseconds. As part of that entire 58 milliseconds, 35.5 of it was used for the process order, and the 11.8 uh, was used by the charge card. <clears throat> so log correlation all done, and we can, we, can, we can see that we can, we can do this across both Java and .NET applications because we're being consistent. Now, the next thing that you can do is you can take this trace ID, and you can go over to the Zipkin uh, application, which is now has been collecting the traces, right? Each one of the Java and .NET components are sending their traces. You can just enter this, and it'll do a query, and you get basically similar information, but you get another level of detail and then another level of accuracy. <clears throat> so here we've got, on the left, we've got the shopping cart service, and in, within the shopping cart service are actually two spans that were created. It calls the order processor, which in turn calls the payment processor. I can look at each individual span just by clicking on this, 
And now I get more details about that particular request, how long it took. And notice what I also get is I get this key value pair set of information. These are attributes that can be applied or added to the span as it's going through the application. It allows you to collect data. And there's, by default, Steel Toe and the Spring Cloud Sleuth will add their set, a default set of attributes, but you as a developer can augment or add whatever information you'd like. So you can capture application-specific information as part of that, as part of that, uh, as part of that trace. And we've got a just-in-time debugger that just popped up. Okay, so that is distributed tracing. That's something new in 2.1 of Steel Toe. It already exists in the Java world as part of Spring Cloud Sleuth, um, and we'll be releasing that as part of 2.1. Is there a date for that? Mm, Do we pick a date yet, Jason, for 2.1 Steel Toe? Huh? August. August. Okay, let's uh, go into metrics. That's another new area as far as uh, Steel Toe is concerned, something new that we're adding in, as part of Steel Toe. So, within, if you go back to the actuator endpoints, you'll note, you will have noticed that the, one of the endpoints is something called metrics. And <clears throat> uh, what this uh, basically does is it allows you to uh, query the application and pull application metrics out of it. So uh, response time by endpoint, um, heap usage, um, you know, uh, garbage collection times, and all that kind of information. I'll show you that here in a second. <clears throat> and this is available both in the Java applications uh, as part of the Spring, actuators, uh, uh, Spring Actuator endpoints, as well as now in the Steel Toe uh, implementation in 2.1. The endpoints are exposed via HTTP endpoints, System metrics are automatically collected for you. So things like I said, heap, heap information, that sort of stuff. Uh, app metrics are also automatically uh, uh, collected and created for you on ingress and egress uh, points within your application. So as requests come in in your ASP.NET Core application, for example, uh, we'll, we'll increment counters, we'll capture timestamps, we'll, you know, all of that sort of stuff. We'll aggregate that information all within uh, uh, the steel toe metrics components. And then optionally, you can actually add your own metrics as well. So if there are some specific uh, application-specific data that you want to capture over a period of time as your application is running, you can add those as well. And there's a nice tagging system as part of Open Census uh, that you can make use of to actually tag your metrics. Then optionally, if you would rather, instead of having to hit the metrics HTTP endpoint and get the data, uh, you can optionally cause the uh, components to export the metrics to a back-end system. And we have already implemented, I'll be demoing this in a second, where we'll actually export the application metrics to the metrics forwarder within PCF, within the Pivotal Cloud Foundry. We're going to do other exporters as well, so you don't have to necessarily. And all that is, by the way, the metrics exporter, all it does is it captures the metrics information and puts it into the loggergator uh, fire hose. So any, any, metrics app, uh, any metrics tool that you want to make use of can actually use that uh, information if it's able to read off, out of it. So let me uh, quickly do a show you that. So I've been running that app, that console app that's been generating, hopefully, uh, requests. And now I'm going to use the PCF metrics tool. To surface some of the metrics. So right now I'm looking at the shopping cart, which is the Java application. And if I want to add to up here at the top is essentially all of the various metrics that are being that are being captured by uh, uh, the uh, PCF metrics. And I can add additional metrics by clicking up here and going to add chart. And then, for example, I can say, um, let's see, heap used. Now, this is a Java application. So I can add the 
heap usage, and now I get a graph of the heap usage for the, whatever the period of time I've selected, and uh, I can take a look at that. Uh, I can go on and do garbage collection, all kinds of, of additional uh, metrics that I can do. But I, what's more interesting is let's go over to the .NET application. So we'll switch over to the orders processor. And as it's refreshing, I've already been in here, as you can see. Um, one of the things we, we see here is we see heap usage uh, coming out of the application. We also see generation collections, GC Gen 1, GC Gen, Gen uh, 0. And we also see, actually, the response time for the process order endpoint plotted over time within. And this is all application metrics that are being captured by steel toe and being flown or being sent onto the uh, fire hose for collection. And in this case, PCF metrics is what's being used to, to uh, demonstrate that. So you get the, you get a, basically you get the same set of kind of metrics that you get out of a job app. You begin to get out of a .NET app. They can be combined into one uh, you know, uh, analysis tool for uh, analysis and, and uh, exploration. This is uh, something that'll be, uh, like I said, in 2.1. Um, and um, we hope to have that soon. And real quickly, because I'm running out of time, I'm going to show Hystrix as well. So what we have here on the Hystrix, in the, in the case of Hystrix, is if you're using Hystrix in order to make requests to backend services, you have to build a command pattern around the remote endpoint. And you make use of the Hystrix command uh, class in order to implement that command. As part of that, you get metrics and monitoring that comes out of that, uh, uh, out of that uh, particular command. And what I've done is, is in the order process, I'm using a Hystrix command to make calls to the payment process. Okay? So we're going to take a look at the Hystrix dashboard that's part of uh, PCF. And uh, I thought I had it up. Let me, uh, so the way you get that is you go over to Services, Circuit Breaker Dashboard, click Manage. Whoops. Hang on. And here is the uh, circuit breaker dashboard. And so, uh, looks like my app, ha my uh, console app has crashed. So it's not generating any. So now we st we're starting to see real time information coming in. The payment service command is the command, the Hystrix command that's making requests of the payment service. Uh, everything's doing, doing well, it's uh, doing, uh, it's done uh, 14, whatever, 13 requests a set. This, uh, I think this window is 20 seconds. So it's doing about 13, uh, that command is processing about 13 requests a second. If I go back to the dashboard and do something crazy like shut down the payments processor, and if we go back to the Hystrix monitor, all of a sudden now we start to see failures, right? Because that, that uh, Hystrix, that request to the payment service is failing. We start to see that uh, the circuit itself has opened. We're using the circuit breaker pattern as part of this. We're getting about uh, 12 short circuits now, uh, a request. So over time, the circuit opens up or close, opens up, and the requests no longer start going to, to the back-end service. If I were to start up the payment service, we'd see this now automatically turn back into uh, all green. Everything's looking good. Uh, what users are seeing, of course, uh, on, on their side is uh, they're just seeing uh, 
order processed successfully, but payment processing is pending. So you're able to basically fall back and take care of, uh, uh, log the order and, and move on. So, okay, um, I think I'm probably pretty much out of time. Uh, there was so much to cover. Um, feel free to come up and ask questions afterwards if you'd like. Um, and I'll be around, of course, uh, the, the rest of the day and tomorrow. Okay? Thank you.